So we're going to begin the vlog of October 1st, 2020. And I'll open with the, the statement. We are not in control of our, end, our necessarily our destiny in terms of we cannot predict where we're going to end up, end up being. But we are control, in control some way of how we get there. Uh, our choices in life are a uh, sort of a half-open deal. Because even if you choose not to make a decision, that will that lack of decision will actually have a consequence as well. So they, you hear people saying you got to be careful what you you know what you do because uh, that can have consequences and you know serious consequences. Or be careful what you say because that could have serious consequences. But if sometimes if you don't say anything or you don't do anything, those can have negative consequences as well. And so what happens is that our, our lives rarely ever meet our expectations. And so what you see in the world today is you see a lot of people, regardless of, regardless of their wealth, whether rich or poor, who are not happy. And they blame people. Oh, why am I not rich? Why am I don't? Ha why don't I have this? Why don't I have that? I should be this, and I should be that. Well, okay, possibly you should be. Well, what what were the decisions you made lately? Uh, you know, throughout your life. Well, sometimes we're thrown things in, in issues that come into our life where we say, "Well, you know, well, I want to make my decision here." Yet, uh, two three months down the road, or even twenty five years down the road, uh it causes us to be in a position that we could never anticipate. But when you go back in hindsight, ask yourself the question, because of all the things you you ended up getting, but you didn't realize you had. In other words, let's say you got extra time with your parents, or you get extra time with a friend, or you stayed within a church that you like. Uh, there, where if you made what we would consider back then a better decision, You wouldn't have had these things. The question is, if you took what we could, what you would, what you would have considered the better decision, this is in hindsight, what would you have achieved? What would have happened to your life if you made that decision? The paths we take and choose to take, we cannot predict where they're going to end up. We have some idea, but we really don't know exactly where they're going to be. And so, for some of the things we want, we have to give up certain things. One is your, and this is the question, for the things that you want, what is your price? What type of price do you have set for the things that you want? Do you want to lose your house? Do you want to lose your family? Do you want to lose, you know, your mother and father? I mean, how many people, you know, well, I'm going to go off and make my fortune. And they do. They, they they rush off. They make their fortune. You know they're busy at life and they're busy at this and busy at that. And you get a phone call. I'm oh, sorry, but your parents are dead now. And at the because I've because my dad's a priest and I'm, I'm I'm close to the church. You had a lot of funerals and you hear people saying, "Oh, I should have paid more. Clo I should have paid closer attention. I should have been over more. I should have come back. I should have done this and I should have done that." But the thing is. At the funeral, it's too late. They see us, if, if you understand the, the nature of the beyond, they see us, but we don't see them. They experience who we are, but we can't experience who they are. Unless, of course, you're a lucid dreamer like I do, and I experience people within my dreams. There are times where I, I, I do experience other people. And I said, "Well, maybe you 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 you, were, you have passed lives, but don't think so because at some point, in some, at some point in time in my dreams, this is what's happened before. I was SpongeBob SquarePants. Now, if that's the case, where you were, or, or, or say, oh, past life experience, so at what point in time was I ever SpongeBob SquarePants? And the answer was, I wasn't. But what happens is, is that there are people who." understand emotion, who can feel emotion. And what happens within the dream, you're given the situation that you are so well and so forth, you're given a scenario and you say, okay, work through that scenario. 
what is the end result in that scenario there? How do you behave to a certain, say, things that anger you? How do you react to something that saddens you? How do you react to something that makes you laugh or, or, so, or something that terrifies you? These are the things that, were, that are within the dream. And this, is, in some cases, adds perspective to life that maybe you didn't have before, and this is what causes the ponderance. You're coming out of a dream, but you're still not, not necessarily out of it. You're awake, but you're not necessarily out of it, and you keep mulling it over in your mind because there are still, there are still understandings to be had. Because you never reach the, to the total truth. You never reach the, the full understanding. You only get bits and pieces of it. Anyways, let's see what happens for today. Uh, it's uh, just about 5 o'clock in the morning. And uh, the sun isn't up yet. <laughs> but other people are just now getting up. And I'm heading off to bed to see what else... Uh, uh, the uh, what other dreams I'll have and end up having tonight? Oh yeah, tonight because <laughs> my day is completely flipped around. Well, yeah, I've forgotten what button to push. <laughs> It is uh, close to 4 o'clock in the morning on October 2nd, 2020. And we're going to add to this. This is sort of a, a middle section between between the beginning section and the uh, the beginning segment and the ending segment. Uh, sort of a, a midway through type of uh, chat. Because we have the beginning chat, we have the ending chat, obviously. But... Uh, I want to keep trying to put in some uh, middle chat as well so that uh, uh, we don't have as much to go through at a particular time. And because sometimes we'll go seven, eight minutes, uh, and that's a little long for uh, each clip. Each clip ideally should be about, 50, about five minutes in, in length. But it does take a bit of time to vlog. Uh, I'm on my YouTube stroll. And as you go by and you find up new, you find new uh, route, routes or avenue. Uh, right now, I'm on the uh, the Yaoi vlog stretch of the path. As it, it, things are developing now, that the YouTube show has its base points and then it has its offshoots. Uh, the offshoot is now. This is off the uh, Yaoi vlog path. The Yaoi vlog path uh, is in that area there. There, the good bits, and that's where I am now. I just came from an off-the-path uh, jaunt through the Leroy's. Uh, it took me to a number of different places and sort of... You get to see different types of people, different types of views, uh, different type of, types of lifestyles, and you can see how everybody approaches life at, at one point or another. And they all have their own various different tri trials, including watching people who are struggling with uh, major disorders like uh, uh, cystic fibrosis. And uh, it, it, it's interesting to see how they sort of approach things. And this at the same time, you can also see genetic structures as well. And these are bizarre genetic structures. People who are not necessarily related to each other, but, but look exactly the same. They have the same body structure. Like one of the ladies, the one of the the the, the girl on um, on one of the that has cystic cystic fibro fibrosis, she looks an enormous amount like like uh, Asha from uh, from uh, our family nest. He looked exactly the same, and you would say, swear that they were the same people until you said start talking to them, and you been to realize that they are two different people uh, and or we're watching their vlogs actually and it, it's interesting to see how each person who, who they look like have different backgrounds different sort of uh, uh, histories 
And you can sort of find this stuff out as you go along on these YouTube strolls. So it is a quite an interesting stroll in terms of being a, a, a people watcher and, and an observer. Uh, this is one of the things that you do enjoy. This is part of my entertainment. So I've got about, uh, I don't know, four videos to watch. Uh, at good at good bits. Uh, I don't have to do any uh, gaming. Uh, the gaming uh, and the meditation won't be until like like five o'clock in the morning. Uh, the time has shifted. Uh, but then I do have deliveries today. I should have uh, uh, the other the, the part for the bathtub that I need should be coming in today. Uh, some of the food, the uh, rice crackers should be coming in, and it'll require a sort of an unboxing in the kitchen, if you will. And an unboxing in a new area that uh, where the bathtub is going to be. I don't know if I'm finished with it yet, so I don't know whether I can put it on. on, on uh, I can film it or not. So they'll sort of be, uh, if I get the area finished enough, I can film it. It was probably going to be in Friday's vlog anyway, so uh, not in this vlog, but because we're getting about 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, we're going to end, and the delivery wouldn't be in yet. So it's going to be in Friday's vlog. Uh, so <laughs> I'll have to do that um, that unboxing there. Uh, I'll be filming another uh, video in the kitchen, uh, another segment in the kitchen, so look forward to that. And I'm going to try to vary up where I, I do the uh, different shots, the, the various different uh, segments to the vlog. Well, it's 10 to 6 in the morning on <laughs> Wednesday, no, Friday. October 2nd, uh, 2020. It took me a while to remember what day it is. Uh, this, it's actually kind of a good thing because it, what it means is I just came out of deep dive research and I was using my second research desk back in the media room. So the media room now is a second research desk capable of doing deep dives <clears throat> and uh, getting lost in the moment. <laughs> And that's what happens is that, that, that in the deep dive there, uh, you, you, you find new things and you don't stop until you get to a point where, okay, I, I, I have a good grasp on this. I know where things are because a lot of times it, it takes a while to get back to where it's going to be if you don't get to that point of, of, of knowing where things are. In other words, you, you're walking into a school, middle school, back to middle school again. You're walking into middle school for the first time. You don't know where the classes are. There's a little bit of an anxiety. Uh, I better find my classroom, or, or you know, or, or I'm going to be sitting in the wrong class and saying, "Well, that's not me. I'm, 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 I'm is, is this, uh, is this English, and this is this uh, Mrs. So and So, who's my t my teacher?" And you know, it, it's kind of awkward when you it gets when, when it gets pointed out you're in the wrong classroom. So. <laughs> There's always that fear of of not knowing where you are when you first start doing something. So you do move to a point where you're comfortable. Is it okay? Good. I'm fine here now. Uh, I kind of have an idea of where I am. This is where I can stop. But sometimes that, that that does take a while. It's not an easy thing to do, nor is it comfortable. Uh, but if you're doing research like I'm doing research, that's what you have to do. And it's sort of a, a, a state now where I can see how well my uh, my um, my YouTube stroll is working now that that I've sort of how I've laid it out. That I can go from point to point to point. I have five basic po I have five basic points that I start with, and then from the basic point, the five basic basic points, I move out to other points that are kind of interrelated. And I find it quite interesting now that, that these five points can branch out into so many different uh, offerings that uh, you can go from one end of the country to another end of the country to, you know, uh, one type of person to another type of person to see how each individual person um, sees life and then deals with the various challenges that comes their way. You can sort of see how they exist. Uh, and the question, this often pops up in, in philosophy when they talk about the existential existentialist philosophers. I find some of these people in a academia to be, and these are the standard academia, the, the standard uh, uh, academic type. 
there are, are are several academic types. Let's, let's go with the standard, and then we'll go with the, uh, the, the, the not-so-standard. The standard one you see is the standard professor. Uh, they are intellectual. They, 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 they have a presence about them that they, they carry their, their, their de definition with them. They show their status as a professor. There are, there are professors who are laid back, but the, the, the standard professor is the one who stands out, who understands there's a difference between himself and everybody else, and the, the, he's got a level of intellect that's uh, significantly better than others. But then there is an other, another type that's rarely ever seen, and they're the lab rat and the library rat. These people are what the, are the professors who, because uh, they're, they're researchers, they just live in their library, they live in their lab, and they don't come out. <laughs> so you never see them. They're always in their lab, they're always in the, in the library, or both, a combi combination of both. And so you rarely ever see them. And that's what I am. I'm basically a lab rat, a library rat where I spend most of my time in the library and most of my time uh, in my laboratory doing uh, work trying to understand the edges of the universe, trying to push my, the level of knowledge. And one of the things to understand is that the only way to push the level of knowledge, and this is standard for most monastics, is uh, self-denial because the biggest obstacle to seeing things is yourself, your own ego. So you take up things like meditation and in, 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 in uh, prayers and so on and so forth to remove the ego so that you can explore more, become a better explorer. And it's about going into the unknown. And so when something like this works, and you, you're not necessarily sure that, sure that it does, and you sort of exist in a world well, basically filled with ignorance, the number of people who don't want to know is unbelievable. And they're out there. They're, you can see this on the news, you can see this in, in the debates. There are people out there who don't want to know. And the thing is, is it's, it's not an issue, particularly in politics, of, of a person that you like the person. It's what's the end result of the, of, of the policies. Look at the person's history. Look at the look, look at the record. Not history. That record will tell you who the person is. But that's all gone in the news. You and you have these again in the news in in journalism. It's no longer journalism. It's now a pretense for something else. They act like journalists. They act like you know uh, uh, statesmen and so on and so forth. But they're not really. It's basically a show. It's all fraud. And so you have to decide: what do you want for life? How do you want to see it, live your life? And a lot of times, if you're going to do do the, the uh, explore on the edges of the universe, explore on the edges of knowledge, you're going to be by yourself because most people don't want to be there. 